Something is moving under your skin. You can see it. Not a vein, not a muscle. A line, pale, alive, and moving. It slides through the meat of your leg, curling and twisting as if your body were a tunnel. You press down, it squirms back. It burns. It feels like someone is dragging a lit wire through your flesh. The pain grows until it's the only thing you can feel. You claw at your skin, desperate to rip it out. But the parasite is deep, too deep to reach, too long to end. Then the skin swells, it pulses, the blister pops. A thin white thread pushes through the wound, wet, slick, alive. It's not leaving your body, it's being born from it. You scream, you dunk your leg into water to stop the fire. Cool relief rushes over you for one second. And that's when you doom everyone else. The worm feels the water and convulses. From the hole in your leg, a milky white cloud erupts. Thousands of larvae gush out into the pond, each one invisible, each one alive, each one waiting for someone thirsty enough to drink. You just became a weapon. You just gave birth to the next outbreak. You are Dracunculus metanensis, the guinea worm, a parasite that turns thirst into hell. Your story begins in heat, the kind that cracks the earth and drives men to madness. There are no rivers here anymore, only puddles left behind by last week's rain. They smell of mud, of algae, of rot. But they're the only water for miles. A man stumbles toward one, dizzy from dehydration. His lips split. His tongue is dry as sandpaper. He kneels, cups the water in his hands, and drinks. It tastes foul. It doesn't matter. His body demands it. What he can't see are the microscopic crustaceans drifting in that murky water. Tiny copepods. And inside them, you. Your larvae, waiting to be swallowed. You slide down his throat unnoticed, through acid that would kill anything else. But not you. You were built for this. Your body is armor. You pierce the intestinal wall like silk. You find the bloodstream, and you start to travel. You drift through veins and arteries like a ghost in a red river. Every heartbeat pushes you deeper. You find another of your kind. You mate, and the male dies. You begin to grow. For nearly a year, you move silently through tissue. No sound, no warning. You live between organs, sliding through muscle, a single thread slowly becoming a rope. One meter, two meters, coiled around bones, behind knees, across calves. Your host feels nothing at first, a little fatigue, some pain. Then the burning starts. You sense light through flesh. You know which way is up. You dig toward heat. The skin swells. The nerves scream. You push harder. The human's leg blisters, swells to twice its size. The pain feels like the flesh is boiling from the inside. They can't walk. They can't sleep. They beg for it to end. Then you reach the surface. You press your head against the skin, and the skin splits. The pain is blinding. It feels like fire under the flesh. Your glistening body slides out, white, worm-like, endless. Every nerve in the leg explodes. They scream, they vomit, they sob as you move inch by inch through their flesh. If they try to pull you out too fast, you snap, and the rest of your body rots inside them. The infection spreads. Gangrene, fever, sepsis. Their leg might have to come off, or they'll die. So, they pull slowly, every day, a few centimeters, winding your body around a stick. The pain never stops. The smell of rot never leaves. The process can take weeks, sometimes months. You are the slowest form of torture nature ever invented. And when it's finally over, when your entire body has been dragged out, when you've dried and died in the sun, you leave behind scars that never fade. You leave behind fear. But the cycle isn't finished. The person you escaped from still had to cool their wound in water. That's where you released your children. And now they drift again, 
inside ponds, inside puddles, inside the same desperate thirst that created you. For centuries, you ruled quietly. You didn't spread fast. You didn't need to. You only needed one person to drink. You crippled villages. Farmers couldn't harvest. Children couldn't walk. Entire communities fell apart under the weight of your patience. You appeared in ancient texts as the fiery serpent. Some say the symbol of medicine, the staff with a snake wrapped around it, was inspired by the way you're wound on a stick to be pulled out. The cure for you became your image. You are pain immortalized in symbol. Then the humans fought back. They learned your pattern. They filtered their water through cloth. They boiled it. They dug deeper wells. They taught each other to keep their wounds out of ponds. They hunted you without drugs or vaccines. Just with discipline and patience, you began to vanish. From 20 million infections a year to a few hundred. From continents to villages. From epidemic to myth. But you're not gone. You wait where the world forgets to look. A puddle in South Sudan. A pond in Chad. A single forgotten well in Ethiopia. You infect dogs now. A desperate trick to survive extinction. They drink the same water. They keep your bloodline moving. You are still here, slithering through the cracks in human progress. You don't need millions of victims. You only need one. One sip. One throat. One year of silence. And you return. You are the ghost in the well, the thread beneath the skin, the parasite that punishes thirst. Your life cycle is patience disguised as cruelty. You don't strike fast. You wait until survival itself becomes your weapon. You make the act of living, the act of drinking, an invitation to agony. That's why you were never feared like a plague. You were feared like a curse. Because you didn't just destroy bodies, you turned need into suffering. You made people afraid of water. And for a creature that doesn't think, that doesn't plan, that doesn't feel, you came terrifyingly close to perfect. Somewhere, right now, a puddle waits, a mouth opens, and history restarts. You don't care who it is. You don't care what year it is. You only care that they're thirsty. Because you were made to wait, and humans were made to drink. That's all it takes. Thank you for watching. If this story made your skin crawl, hit subscribe, drop a like, and stay tuned for more stories about the creatures that prove the cruelest things in nature are often the quietest.